bell tower with her husband Gray and Fudge the dog. And living in the bell tower like that, they used to have a lot of room downstairs where the pews used to be. In. And seeing as how they took out all of the pews and having all that room, they decided that they didn't have to take out their garbage for a long time. We got up there, found the place was filled with garbage, and we decided it'd be a friendly gesture for us to take the garbage down to the town dump. So we took the half a ton of garbage, put it in the back of a red VW microbus, took shovels and rakes and implements of destruction, and headed on toward the town dump. We got there. There was a sign, a chain across the road saying, closed on Thanksgiving. We had never heard of a dump being closed on Thanksgiving before. So with tears in our eyes, we drove off into the sunset, looking for another place to put the garbage. And we didn't find one, till we come to a side road. And off of the side of the side road, there was a 15 foot cliff, and at the bottom of the cliff, there was another pile of garbage. And we decided that one big pile would be better than two little ones. And rather than bring that one up, we decided to throw ours down. And that's what we did. Drove back to the church, had a Thanksgiving dinner that couldn't be beat, went to sleep and didn't get up until the next morning when we got a phone call from Officer Obi. He said, kid, we found your name on an envelope at the bottom of a half a ton of garbage. Just wanted to know if you had any information about it. And I said, yes, sir, Officer Obi. I cannot tell a lie. I put that envelope under that garbage. It was after talking to Obi for about 45 minutes over the telephone that we finally arrived at the truth of the matter. And Obi said we had to go down and pick up the garbage. We also had to go down and talk to him at the police officer station. Now, friends, there was only one of two things that Obi could have done at the police officer station. And the first thing was, he could have given us a medal for being so brave and honest over the telephone wasn't very likely. We didn't expect it. And of course the other possibility was that he could have bawled us out and told us never to be seen driving garbage around the vicinity again, which is what we expected. But when we got to the police officer station, there was a third possibility we hadn't counted upon and we was both immediately arrested, handcuffed. And I said, Obi, I don't think I can pick up the garbage with these handcuffs on. He said, shut up, kid. Get in the back of the patrol car. And we sat in the back of the patrol car and drove to the, quote, scene of the crime, unquote. Now, friends, I want to tell you about the town of Stockbridge, Massachusetts, where this was happening. They got three stop signs, two police officers, and one police car. But when we got to the scene of the crime, there was five police officers and three police cars being the biggest crime of the last 50 years and everybody wanted to get in the newspaper story about it. And they was using up all kinds of cop equipment they had hanging around the police officer station. They was taking plaster tire tracks, footprints, dog smelling prints. And they took 27 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us. They took pictures of the approach, the getaway, the northwest corner, the southwest corner, that's not to mention the aerial photography. And it was after the ordeal we went back to the jail. Obi said he was going to put us in the cell. He said, kid, I'm going to put you in a cell. Give me a wallet and your belt. And I said, Hobie, I can understand you wanting my wallet, so I don't have any money to spend in the cell. But what do you want my belt for? He said, kid, we don't want any hangings. And I said, Obi, did you think I was going to hang myself for littering? Obi said he was making sure. And friends, Obi was, because he took out the toilet seat so I couldn't hit myself over the head and drown. Took out the toilet paper so I couldn't bend the bars, roll the toilet paper out the window, slide down the roll, have it escape and get away. Obi was making sure, all right. And it was about four or five hours later that Alice, remember Alice? 
still the song about Alice, and she'd come by, and with a few nasty words to old be on the side, she bailed us out of jail. We went back to the church, had another Thanksgiving dinner that couldn't be beat, went to sleep and didn't get up until the next morning when we all had to go to court. We walked in, sat down, Obi come in with the 27 eight by 10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us and he sat down a man come in he said all rise and we stood up and Obi stood up with the 27 eight by 10 colored glossy pictures and the judge walked in sat down with a C and I dog he sat down, we sat down. Obi looked at the CNI dog, and then at the 27 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures, and looked at the CNI dog. And Obi began to cry, because Obi came to the realization that this was a difficult case of American blind justice. And there was no way the judge was going to look at the 27 8 by 10 colored. Well, it didn't matter. Cause we was fined twenty-five dollars each. We had to pick up the garbage in the snow. But of course, that's not what I came to talk about so much. I just thought I'd mention it tonight. I thought I'd talk a little bit about the draft we had years ago. And for those that don't know or can't remember or weren't there, back in those days, we used to have a thing called the Selective Service System, which meant that when you was a guy and you turned eighteen. You had to register with the Selective Service so that you could select some kind of service that might be of interest to you. <laughs> if your choice was none of the above, they would help you by making a selection for you. And to do that, they had buildings all around America where you had to go in, get injected, inspected, detected, infected, neglected, and selected. And I remember I had to go in there one morning a long time ago for my physical examination. It was on Whitehall Street in New York City and I remember I got good and drunk the night before because I wanted to feel my best when I went in that morning. I mean, I wanted to feel, I wanted to look, I, I wanted to be like the all-American kid. And when I went in that morning, I was hung down, I was brung down, I was hung up, I was all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly looking things. I walked in, I sat down, they gave me a piece of paper, said, kid, see the psychiatrist, room 604. I went in there, I said, shrink, I want to kill, I mean, I want to kill, I want to see blood and gore and guts and veins in my teeth, eat dead, burnt bodies, I mean, kill, kill, and I started jumping up and down, yelling, yeah, kill, kill, and he started jumping up and down with me, and we was both jumping up and down, yelling, yeah, kill, kill, kill. Till the sergeant come over, pinned a medal on me, sent me down the hall saying, You're our boy. I didn't feel real good about it. But I proceeded on down the hall getting more injections, inspections, and all kinds of stuff that they was doing to me at the thing there. And I was there for two, three, four, five hours. I was there for a long time, going through all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly things. And they was inspecting, injecting every single part of me. And they was leaving no parts untouched. But I proceeded through until I finally come to see the very last man. I walked up, I said, what do you want to see me about? He said, kid, we only have one more question. Have you ever been arrested? And I told him the story of the Alice's Restaurant Massacre with five-part Harmony Film Orchestration. He stopped me there. He said, kid, did you go to court? And I told him the story of the 27 eight by 10 color glossy pictures with the circles and arrows. And he stopped me again. He said, kid, I want you to go over and sit down on that bench that says Group W. Now, kid. <laughs> I went over there. Group W. Group W is where they used to put you if you might not have been moral enough to join the army after committing your special crime. 
And there was all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly looking people on the bench next to me. It was mother rapers and father stabbers and father rapers. It was father rapers sitting there on the bench next to me. I mean, these was mean, nasty, ugly, horrible, crime kind of guys. And the meanest, ugliest, nastiest one, the meanest father raper of them all, was coming over to me and he sat down next to me and said, Kid, what'd you get? I said, I ain't get nothing. I had to pay $25 and pick up the garbage. I said, Kid, what was you arrested for? I said, Littering. And they all moved away from me on the bench there, giving me the hairy eyeball and all kinds of stuff. Took my sit and creating a nuisance. And then they all come back and shook my hand. We had a great time on the bench talking about crime, mother stabbing, father raping, who was smoking cigarettes and all kinds of stuff, having a good time. Till the sergeant come over. He had some paper in his hand. He held it up. He went like this, he said, Get this paper, got 47 words to the different senses. When all time the crime detailed, the crime ain't got to say, Pretend to it about the crime, the rest of his name, kind of thing, got to say, and he talked for 45 minutes, and nobody understood a word he said. <laughs> but we had fun filling out the forms and playing with the pencils on the bench. And I wrote down the master key like I was supposed to, and I put down my pencil, turned over the piece of paper, and there on the other side of that piece of paper, in the middle of the other side, away from everything else on the other side, underlined, capitalized, quotated, read the following words. Kid, have you rehabilitated yourself? I went over to the sergeant, I said, Sergeant, you got a lot of gall to ask me if I've rehabilitated myself. I mean, I'm sitting here on the bench. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm sitting here on the group down by your bench because you want to know if I'm moral enough to join the army, burn women, kids, houses, children, villages after being a litter bug. <laughs> he said, kid, we don't like your kind. We're going to send your fingerprints off to Washington. And friends, somewhere in Washington, enshrined in a little folder, is a study in black and white of my fingerprints. They're still there. They've been there 52 freaking years! But I'm not the only one. They've been adding to the collection recently. And so the only reason I'm singing you the song tonight is because you may know somebody in a similar collection. Even some of you could be in a collection like that. And if you ever find yourself in a collection like that and you don't know what to do, there may be only one thing that, well, there may not actually be much you can do, but there's something you can try. And it's to be wherever it is you're supposed to be, as it were. Just stop whatever you're doing. Just take a moment. Remember the old song. And just go like this. You just say, You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. That's it. Just a couple of bars of the old song. I mean, imagine somebody trying that these days. Probably not worth collecting. But imagine two of them. Maybe two of them trying to get married in parts of Kentucky or something. Or maybe three of them. Or maybe 50. Or maybe 50,000 people stop whatever they're doing, singing a few bars of the old song. Be worth collecting then. Not only that, when you get enough people singing a song like that, even the people collecting might start joining in. And when you get a song that's worth joining in on, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, or who you are, what your story is, it becomes what we used to call a movement. Now one of these days somebody's gonna write a song like that. It's not this one. Every, gener every generation needs their own songs. But while we're waiting for that one to get wrote, we can practice on the one we got. It's not even all that hard. Some of you might even know it. At Alice's Restaurant You can get anything you want At Alice's Restaurant Walk right in and surround the back Just a half a mile from the railroad track And you can get anything you want At Alice's Restaurant Oh no, that seriously sucked <laughs> I mean, if you want to change the world to stuff You can't start singing loud just at the end or something you gotta be singing loud all the time so you're worth collecting to begin with. 
So we'll wait for it to come around again on the guitar. I'm still not proud or tired, just don't want to sing it for another 50 years. You can't get anything that's better at Alice's Rest, except in Alice. You can't get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Walk right in this roundabout, just a half a mile from the railroad track. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Da -da 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 -da. At Alice's Restaurant. Let me sing you this song here if I can.